Hey guys, Tomboy601, and welcome to the Carriers. They are here. Today we're talking about how to unlock them, the general skills, just general overview, how to play them, controls, all sorts of things like that that you're going to want to know how to do in order to play these brand new ships. Before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at our comment of the day. Comment of the day goes out to someone who's left a comment at one of our previous videos. This one going out to Lobby Robbie saying, I haven't watched the video yet, but Fubuki better be number one. Of course, that's on our best and worst series for tier five destroyers. And yes, Fubuki ended up being my personal pick, but not our mathematic formulas pick. If you haven't checked out the best and worst series, we go ahead and compare the best and worst ships at the tier, according to me, but also according to straight up math, because who can argue with math? So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive on into cares. First things first, how do we unlock these things? Well, you're going to have to go over to a new game mode called Airstrike. Of course, the carriers are a test currently, and as such, they have been segregated into their own game mode. Once you're in that game mode, you're going to have to complete a couple of challenges in order to, to get them. First, this week we have tier threes, specifically New Dimensions tier three is the challenges that you're going to have to complete. In order to unlock the American carrier, the Langley, you're gonna to have to earn 1500 XP before bonuses in battleships, cruisers, or destroyers. So once you get a carrier, you won't be able to earn the XP for this challenge over there, but you will still be able to earn them in pretty much any other ships. Now, as of currently playing, for me, the queue times for regular ships is actually astronomical. There aren't enough people playing carriers yet, though I'm sure by the time you're watching this video, those queue times may have normalized and it might not be too bad in order to get into this game mode. Now, the challenge to unlock the tier three Japanese carrier, Hoshu, is slightly different. For that one, you're simply going to have to win three different battles. Once again, not too bad, but this also must be done in that airstrike playlist. Once you complete either of these challenges, you unlock both the ship and the commander. So now let's go ahead and take a look at each of the commanders and their skills. So we're going to go ahead and start off with looking at the American commander, Ernst King. His base trait increases your ship's AA armament damage. Then going on to his regular skills at the first tier, he has a good day's work, which uh, reduces the reload time of your damage control party or... He has swatting at flies, which increases your aircraft carrier's average AA damage per second. The next slot, he can either equip Stronghold, which decreases the incoming damage to your aircraft carrier, or use Emergency Power, which increases your aircraft's cruise speed by a certain percentage. At the next tier, he's going to go ahead and have three choices on Alert, which decreases rudder shift time. Out of Sight, which decreases the detectability of dive bombers and increases their hit points, or Hidden Threat, which does the same for torpedo bombers. For his last set of base skills, he has the option between Look At Me Now, which increases the ship's concealment rating, or Burn Baby Burn, which both increases fire chance of bombs and also increases their damage. The last thing he has access to is going to be his legendary skills. Now, when you unlock these, you will get a fully tiered up commander. So level 16 with all of the legendary ranks completed for his legendary perks. He has fully packed, which is going to increase the number of consumable charges he has. He also has a death from above. So when he's within range of friendly ships, he's going to decrease incoming damage to the aircraft carrier. And then also the airspeed of his dive bombers are going to be increased. Next, let's go ahead and talk about Timon Yamaguchi. He's going to be the aircraft carrier commander for the Imperial Japanese Navy. His base rate increases your ship's AA armament damage. Moving into his tier skills. First tier, he has either a good day's work, which reduces your damage control party reload time, and swatting flies, which increases the damage of your aircraft carrier's AA armament. Next, he has Dark Silhouette, which is, improves your aircraft carrier's concealment, and One-Way Ticket, which increases the torpedo bomber's damage. On his next tier, he has a choice between three different skills on Alert, which enables a indicator of incoming long-range enemy fire, while also improving the ship's steering. 
then out of sight, which improves the concealment and maximum HP of dive bombers and hidden threat, which does the same thing for torpedo bombers. His final choosable skills are going to be between look at me now, which increases ship concealment rating and burn baby burn, which increases the damage and the fire setting chances of your planes H E bombs. His legendary skills, he has the choice between two, fully packed, like we said earlier, increases consumable damage, and then we are Legion, which increases your torpedo bomber speed while also decreasing damage to your aircraft carrier when you are in proximity of your teammates. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the aircraft carriers themselves. Hosho is the one that I currently have unlocked. She is the Japanese aircraft carrier. Let's first go ahead and take a look at her mod slots because this is what I find very interesting. She has one new mod and one that we've seen before. In her first mod slot, she has secondary battery mod one, which increases secondary battery firing range and the decreases the dispersion on them. Or she has air groups mod one, which increases the aircraft return speed by 20%. Next in her other mod slot, she has either secondary battery mod two, which increases secondary battery firing range by 20% and decreases the desert version by 20% or air groups mod two, which increases the hit points of both the dive bombers and the torpedo bombers by about 3%. She does also have a hull upgrade, which is going to increase her hit points to 31,800 and decrease the rudder shift time to 7.9 seconds. Right now, both of the carriers in the game have only two kinds of squadron, it's HE bombers and torpedo bombers. HE bombers are of course going to be those dive bombers and torpedo bombers. Well, you can guess what they fire. Consumables are very interesting for the ship because you have two sets, one of which you don't even control. So let's go ahead and talk about gameplay of the aircraft carriers. And then as we talk about that, we will cover the consumables because I think that's how it's going to make the most sense. So when you load into the game, you're going to be greeted with what seems to be your usual screen. You're going to be able to control the power of the ship, go forward and reverse. Then you're going to see that your consumables are now auto filling when you're controlling the carrier. And that's because the consumables that you control are only going to be the aircraft. In order to switch what kind of aircraft you want to use, you're going to use the X button, much like you would use the X button or the square button in order to change ammo types. But in this case, you're changing squadron types. You'll be able to launch these fighters by pressing the right trigger, and that will get your current selected squadron in the air. Now you can only control one squadron at the time, and they're going to go ahead and form up. From there, you're gonna use the left stick to sort of control them. They travel on a singular plane. They don't fly like planes you would think in other games. They are a, they are on the plane of the air and they stay at that plane until they are ready to attack. If you press forward on them, they're going to speed up, pull back, they're gonna slow down. This is also going to affect the amount of heat in the engines. That's that bar off to the left. That shows you how much power or engine heat is in. You do have a consumable that is going to completely reduce that engine heat if you need to continue to be as fast as possible. That's gonna be up on the D-pad and down on the D-pad here is going to be to control to return to the ship. Here we launched with six fighters, which gives us three different bombing runs essentially. In order to execute an attack, you're gonna see an aim indicator down below. And this is probably what's going to take the most getting used to because it is a very different way of playing this game. Whenever you press the right trigger, that circle is about where your fighters are going to end up doing their dive bomb run. You'll be able to slightly adjust the left, right, and forward and back on it, but that's where it's going to drop. So if a ship is moving away from you and you hit it right with, when it's in there, they're just gonna be gone. It is very much going to be about when your, when your planes are about to dive or when they are available to dive, is the targeted ship going to be in that area and then in addition, is there, are they still gonna be in that area after the bombs drop? Because it is a full rigmarole and is definitely a completely different way of playing the game. So that is the dive bombers. Torpedo bombers are very similar. The major change for them is going to be that aiming reticle. Where the aiming reticle is, is where the torpedoes are going to drop. Once your plane gets down to about the land, you'll see that the reticle will begin to close. 
You can fire it at any point as long as you have a green indicator. However, the torpedoes can essentially change their trajectory and this can be kind of a good thing or kind of a bad thing. I definitely had a couple of torpedo drops where trajectory was totally off, but because I'm still learning and didn't get the actual angle of the attack right to begin with, the trajectory change worked in my benefit and I got the hit on the ship when I definitely shouldn't have. But once again, that's the whole thing is it's very, it's is a brand new skill you are going to have to learn. Now, one thing you may also see is the flak guns and flak cannons. If you fly through the like clouds of flak, you are gonna take additional damage to your aircraft. So that's kind of a small in-game mechanic to kind of keep you active as opposed to just staying on one heading. You do you will want to weave in and out of the flak fire just because you don't wanna take additional damage to your planes because they are surprisingly weak. Like they, they will crumble. Now, mind you, the Japanese and American aircraft are slightly different. Japanese aircraft are gonna have better concealment overall, while the American aircraft are going to have better health pools overall. I've only unlocked the Japanese plane so far, but I'm definitely looking forward to getting the American planes because the concealment on the Japanese planes isn't that great. It's seven kilometers, which is decent, but not fantastic. You're not sneaking up on anyone especially when a, a fire starts at around five kilometers for a lot of the ships in this current test. That's where I'm starting to see where I'm going to have to start avoiding different ships is that's when I'm hitting their AA fire. So I would say I'm looking forward to the American planes once I am able to unlock them. But this has just been a quick overview. So far, my first impressions are carriers are very interesting. I don't know if they're overpowered to say i played a good chunk of games today and out of them i don't think i was ever on the top part of the team and that's probably for good reason i wasn't able to really cap anything carriers have good concealment and you are being targeted straight out of the gate the feeling and the incentive is to stay hidden now when you're doing attacks here's the thing the attacks aren't that powerful from the aircraft so far for these tier three ships at least Torpedoes not doing a ton of damage. Also, they seem to have a very low flooding chance, which limits your ability to do damage over time, which is a big deal. That is that is where you were, would most likely see a large increase in your damage output, just because if you were able to strike the same ship twice, they'd most likely burn their damage consumable parties after the first strike of torpedoes. And then when you would follow up with the second one, that's where you would see some real damage. But overall, I'm not getting huge damage games in carriers. Now, am I? do I need to improve my skills? Most likely. But overall, I don't think these are an easy overpowered win just because of once you get spotted, you are very vulnerable. You are going to take a ton of damage. And if you are not paying attention to the minimap, you are very much wide open to, to, to torpedoes and, and the such just because if you are moving at all, you aren't steering. You can't change course. You can't do anything unless you recall your fighters. And even then you are a very slow and lumbering craft. So you are definitely vulnerable in the most extreme sense of the word. But yeah, that's my impressions of cares for this first bit. Definitely we'll have a longer review on them upcoming and more coverage of all sorts of World of Warships. If you like this video and you want to see more carrier coverage, go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Most importantly, also go ahead, follow me over on Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, all those links down in the comments below. Guys, I hope you like this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.